afternoon, good afternoon to everybody who's tuning in. Welcome to the Kids Drive on the Sunset Safari. My name's Chad. On camera today we've got Panda. And we are out and about this afternoon on Juma looking for anything that we can find. Just a reminder that this is a live and interactive show, so please do send through your questions and comments. You can use the hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter or X. If you would like to subscribe, you can do so on our website, or you can join the conversation on our YouTube channel. And we have come to an area where we last had the wild dogs this morning. They were indeed running down this road that Panda is focused on right now and this is the exact spot where they were last seen. So we're going to drive down this road in a little bit and head towards a, a water hole where most likely they have gone and they could have stopped there for a drink and then continued but we'll have to wait and see. I'll put my tracking skills to the work and see if I can work my magic. But it's going to be a fantastic afternoon. It's nice and overcast, very cool temperatures. So there might be a little bit of action happening this afternoon here on Juma. Well, I can only hope for some action to go down. The wild dogs did look like they were quite full this morning. So they might have settled at that water hole. Milo, are you wondering how big the toes or how long the toes are of a wild dog? Um, well, to be honest with you, I don't know the exact measurement of the wild dog's toes, but they're very similar to like a medium-sized dog. That's the way I can describe their track. So probably like that big. If I see a nice track at some point of the wild dog, then I will be able to show you the track and then it will might be quite nice to see the size difference. I'll have to use something in the vehicle to give you an indication of how big that toe is. But I would say a, a medium sized dog is probably the, the best that I could describe it as. There you can see that it is a very overcast day here on Juma. But I am going to get going and start heading down the road and see if we can find the tracks of these wild dogs. But for now, I'm going to send you over to Eric and for him to say hello. Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody, welcome, welcome. My name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera and this afternoon we are going to be your eyes and ears. As we take you, we are on the move to look for our first patients, uh, our first clients. We're not too sure where they are, but we're going to start off with the buffalo and see where the buffalo have got to. Uh, I'm pretty excited for this afternoon's drive. It's lovely and warm. Not so overcast like Duma. There's a little bit of kind of cloud cover, but not really much. The sun is able to shine straight through it. And uh, it is a very warm afternoon, if I haven't said so. It's actually very, very warm. Uh, I would say it's probably in the 38, 30, 37, 38, 39, maybe up there. It's warm. But uh, yeah, still, still excited for this afternoon. There's endless opportunities and possibilities of seeing all sorts of animals. At the moment, we've just seen warthogs, and the warthogs just don't want to sit still long enough for us. <laughs> so we continue driving. It is very windy as well, as you can hear. And we are driving into the wind because it's coming from the west. I mean, from the east, my mistake. The wind normally comes from the west. It's very quiet. Now the buffalo. 
buffalo was somewhere. They were feeding somewhere around here, not too too late in the day. We were with them almost towards the end of our sunrise safari. So I Mmm, Eden, all sorts of smells, all sorts of smells. Now we know that the buffalo are in this area because that's also one of the smells that I can smell. They leave a lot of kind of their, their droppings all over the place and that's given off a very strong smell. On top of that there's a there's a grass smell. So the grasses and then there's also another flower that's called Mpepo. Mpepo uh, also known as wild sage in South Africa. Uh, that is also a smell that I can smell. Uh -huh. Buffalo poo on the road. Yes, there it goes. And buffalo poo looks very similar to uh, that of cows. Because buffaloes are basically cows that are in the wild. Or cows are buffalo that have just been domesticated. Either way you choose to look at it, however you are, however you choose to, buffalo are very dangerous. That's all we need to know. Cows are dangerous, but not as dangerous. Uh, we are now entering into that area where they could possibly be. There's a lot of fields that they like to come and feed at in this area. And obviously with this heat and the wind, I don't think they would have moved too far too quickly. I think they would have taken it fairly easy as it did start to get warm pretty fast towards the the end of our morning safari sunrise safari better is more than a word to us it's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes oceans and wildlife it's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you. The European rollers is something that we find in this area. Well, the only European rollers that I've seen on Amakala this year have been in this part of the reserve. We used to, we normally see them all over, but I'm not too sure. This year we haven't 
we haven't seen too many. Maybe we're just not looking in the right places or we're not looking hard enough, but uh, I'm pretty sure you would see one or you would know one when you see one. They're very, very bright blue, a bit of black, very, very pretty birds. So far, not seeing much except for the odd stray antelope at the edge of thickets, standing in the shade. There's a what looks like a herd of zebra, I think, in front of us. Well, well, after a very exciting morning, I'm out here once again on our sunset safari and welcome to all the kids. My name is Cedric and behind the camera with me, we've got a Muscles and Paul and his teddy bear. <laughs> That's so cute. So yes, uh, it is going to be a wonderful afternoon. I've got a feeling and uh, well, I am going to head into the area where we had two male leopards this morning, pretty much trying to uh, take down a warthog. They did kill the warthog. So I'm going to head into that area to go and follow up there. I'm sure that they will be <coughs> they were back and forth in that side. So let's see if we can get a, a leopardo early on. If not, well, we're going to see what else we can find around here. There is so many other interesting, th interesting things here on a safari. It's always beautiful just to be out and about in nature and uh, to see what nature has in store because we can never predict never predict what we're going to see for the afternoon it is what nature says we're going to see and uh, that's what we will see but we try our utmost best to see if we can pick up on those uh, stories of what's been happening from this morning to now this afternoon and uh, yes we will look so i'm going to look very carefully i've got to keep my eyes peeled very much so these two male leopards, one his name is Tortoise Pan and the other one's name is Mawati. And uh, they bumped into each other this morning and they had a little bit of a standoff and confrontation. And uh, during that whole confrontation between the two of them, there was a poor little female warthog that was involved there as well. And she was uh, killed by one of the males, caught by the other one, but killed by the other one. It was very interesting. Something that I've never seen in my entire 18 years being a guide. I've never seen a sighting like that. So it was once in a lifetime for me. So I'm hoping that this story continues playing out. Ooh. Well. Ella aged 12. Uh, LA 12 sorry, I'm just doing that with my radio because it seems like it's breaking up badly. For some reason, as soon as it's lying down here, yeah, it breaks up. So I'm just going to keep my radio here for the time being. LA age 12 yes, it'll be nice just to see if we can pick up on Tortoise Pan again. I would love to see Tortoise Pan or even more white, either one of them. So let's see what we can find. Hello, let's see what we can find here for the afternoon. I'm just going to keep my eyes peeled just to see if any of their tracks have come over again. So it happened just inside here, yeah, just, oh, oh, we've got little, oh my word, we've got uh, Koki Franklin chicks, Koki Franklin chicks on the road, oh, the, don't go, in. there's mommy, mommy's on the ground, and there's a little one, a Koki Franklin, that is so, so sweet, what, this is our smallest of the Franklin species that we do have here, and I think I saw two, she had two with her. Oh, we're just going to keep very still here. There's the other one. Our oh, three. Look at that, running with mom. That is too adorable. And the male's quite, a, quite different. The male's got this very orange head. But it's just... Oh, look at them. Hello, little ones. Having their little often, Friday afternoon stroll with mom.
They are so cute. The one is just being a little bit brave and then mom. So like, come on, we can cross the road. Look at that, there goes another one. Oh, disappearing into the grass. Madeline, how did they get their name? Koki. Koki Franklin, I don't know. Are you thinking about like a Koki of, uh, you know, when you go to art class and all that and you draw things with a Koki? Maybe that? I don't know, Madeline. <clears throat> Very good question. What do you think, Muscles and Paul? Yeah. It's a difficult one, eh? Yeah. Uh, Koki yeah. Franklin. Maybe there was a, a, a guy that came here many, many years ago, uh, explore, one of the explorers, and maybe his name was uh, Koki, Koki, <laughs> Mr. Koki Franklin from the US of A. <laughs> like Benjamin Franklin, but his name was Koki Franklin. It was Benjamin Franklin's son. <laughs> I had no idea, but anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Good, good, uh, good question. Good question. <coughs> All right, let's try and follow, follow up on those leopards. So I am going to go in with the vehicle into that area because very. Oh, sorry, I almost lost the radio there. Paul, let's go in there. Eh? Let's quickly go and double check inside here. Yeah. Let's go and double check inside here. Yeah. Always make sure you put into low range so your vehicle is ready to go off road. If you don't go into low range and you go fall into a warthog hole or a artfog hole or something like that, at least you're in low range so you can get out of that situation very easily. <laughs> legend age six is some poor good cameraman yeah legend yo uh, you know it um yo yeah, okay i think i'll need about four hours to um run through this one <laughs> no legend um poor is fantastic uh one thing i can say um poor and myself we get on so well and as soon as you get on well with your cam up and we know each other so well we, he knows my my way of uh, guiding, I know his way of uh, being a cam op. As soon as that happens, it makes life so much easier for us to spot things and to get into situations where it makes it quite, uh, quite unique and fantastic. So his, cam his camera w uh, work is uh, absolutely amazing. So, Legend, there it is. I'm hoping that uh, uh, Mpo is taking some notes down. Now uh, let's uh, take a look here. So it happened here somewhere. Yeah, I think in front of us. So we're just gonna. It happened here. Yeah, just there. All right, let's go through this area very slowly. I just want to see if the, uh, this leopard did not come back, like during the, the morning while we were still looking for them, and grabbed that warthog and maybe dragged it under a bush somewhere where we can't find it uh, they can they do that sometimes so i'm just gonna quickly come in here and look because it looked like it came from that side so i want to look there here quickly i'm just going to do a little loop around and then we'll carry on following up on where we last had them see too much here. Do, 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 do. Alright, uh, I don't see too much in this area. As well, I think with all the squealing of that warthog, it, 
if there was a hyena in the area, he would have actually, he would have actually, if the hyena was here, he would have actually had a go. Uh, Experience captivating wildlife documentaries, showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Now, these trees obviously is not just used for nesting material, nesting homes, but they're also, like I said, food source. Um, they're also used for firewood. In South Africa, sweet thorn is very, very good firewood. It burns nicely, and the coals tend to keep the heat for, for a decent amount of time. Um, so you'll find a lot of the times guys selling wood on the side of the road in white uh, bags. Those will most likely be sweet thorn on the inside and they they grow everywhere they have no problem with growing in all sorts of conditions just very not very shady conditions so if there are a lot of trees with big canopies that make or produces a lot of shade in areas uh, you'll find that the, the sweet thorn will not grow there they're grown open plains there are a number of different types of uh, virtualia uh, trees in South Africa. Um, but the one that we get here the most would be the sweet thorn. Welcome back to Juma, everybody. Where we did track down the wild dogs. We found their tracks heading towards that waterhole, and unfortunately, they crossed out into our neighboring property. So we've left that area. So we've got a little bit of a change in plan. We came to another waterhole to see if there was anything that's looking to come down to the water to drink. And we haven't found anything just yet. 
but we are hoping for maybe some elephants this afternoon. Elephants would be great for everybody to see and obviously anything else that does come our way. But elephants, I mean, they're very water dependent. So, I mean, it's always good to start checking around the water to see if you can find any sign of any elephants maybe coming down to the water or leaving the water. You can follow their tracks and hopefully then find them. But how beautiful is this? Everett, the reason animals dung changes color, um, it's because of what they're eating. So certain animals will eat certain foods. So if we talk about something like a little porcupine, which feeds on the inner bark of a tree, the inner bark of a tree is red in color. And often when you see porcupine dung, it's got this reddish tinge to it. And then when it dries up, it then turns quite dark in color. Um, elephant dung also, because they're eating a lot of grass and fruits and leaves and things like that, when they drop their dung, all that color mixture is quite yellow um, in color. And then when it does dry up, it goes a little bit darker. So it's, it's also got to do with the, the freshness of the dung, but also what they are eating will have an influence on the color of their dung. Panda, it might be quite tough, but there is a mongoose. Do you see the termite mound? Yeah. So I'm just trying to direct Panda onto, there's a dwarf mongoose that's sitting on top of a termite mound there. You can just see the tail, almost looks like a, a rat. But it is indeed a dwarf mongoose and they're often in big groups together or troop together. And so there might be 10 or 12 of them that might be around that little termite mound but that one looks like it's on guard keeping an eye out on maybe any potential threats that might be around also keeping a lookout for any prey I mean these mongoose they will feed on anything basically I mean sometimes they'll kill snakes they will often feed on beetles and grubs and worms and centipedes and millipedes and things like that. So they are carnivores. They do look very, very cute, but they are quite vicious if you do see them hunting. And they'll, what they'll often do is if there's a big, oops, there it goes. If there's something big like a snake, they'll often then all go for that snake. Let me maybe pan the drive a little bit closer. You can maybe see if there's some more there. Okay. So I'm gonna just drive a little bit closer to that termite mount. Oh, it's back. But if you bear with me for 20 seconds, we'll try to get a closer view. I'm just gonna stop here and see if those dwarf mongoose do make an appearance once again. I'm not gonna talk too loud because maybe though we're gonna scare them off. There we go, there's two of them now on top there. How amazing is that? So often these uh, mongoose, they will use a termite mound like this one that's there 
And that's where they'll build their home. So what they'll do is they'll sleep in these termite mounds, that will be their home. And then they'll always come out of the termite mound, go and forage, and then they'll come back towards the termite mound. So this will be their territory, the, the area that they will roam. And Leo, you're asking about water snakes. So there's no specific water snake that I can think of, but there are lots of snakes that do go on water. Um, I mean, they can swim. So, I mean, I've seen cobras before. The Mozambique spitting cobras and snouted cobras moving over the, the water. I'll have to just double check on the specific water snakes, but not to my knowledge can I see or do I know of uh, any specific water snakes. But how amazing is this to see those mongies? And there's lots of different, well, there's four different types of mongies. And there's one nocturnal mongoose, so that's active during the night time. And that's called a white-tailed mongoose, and it's also the largest of the mongoose family. And you'll only see them after dark, so nocturnal meaning they're active at night time. So during the daytime they find a nice thick area or a little burrow to sleep in. And as that sun does set, then they will start to move around. But these mongoose that we're looking at, the dwarf mongoose, and slender mongoose and banded mongoose, they are all diurnal, so active during the daytime. And it does seem like they are a little bit camera shy today. And still see them running around, but there's quite a lot of greenery around there. Panda's trying to Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> well, we've got a beautiful compretum uh, tree here. And there was a beautiful bird that was exactly in the center there. It was actually a juvenile Diedrich's cuckoo. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that Diedrich's cuckoo is just uh, flying off now. Ah, uh, well, we're going to see if we can get it again. It's summer here. It's busy catching all the, all the little insects and all that to the side. Like, it just had a wasp. So it caught a wasp and it was busy feeding on a wasp now. All right. Uh, Paul, let's go around. Ay, 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 ay. Let's see if we can find it again. It's just hanging around, yeah. It's catching all the little insects, like little worms and wasps that's hanging around on some of these trees, yeah. So I want to see where did it fly off to. It's a beautiful, and it's got these stunning little uh, white, uh, brown stripes across the white chest. And it is. Uh, Lovely to see, a little juvenile. So it hasn't got that full adult plumage yet. Um, I think it might have taken off. I don't see him anywhere now. Oh. <sighs> All right. All right, so I was at one of the little pans here, just still, to, still trying to follow up on the leopards. So I'm just going to go along Savage Track. They, they weren't that into that area towards Treehouse Dam. So I'm going to go to Treehouse Dam now and just see if anything has popped out on that side. Let's go and have a squiz there. But nothing's gone south. That, that's a big thing. Nothing's gone south. Well, Atlas uh, H10, you know, being a guide, uh, you know, it actually comes from from my passion from when I'm a young, when I was a young kid and all that. Um, my older brother was a guide, then I decided to get into guiding, and you know, everyone, it takes, you know, it depends on your the individual on how long that person wants to study on certain things, um, because a guide can, you know, you can start really branching off to different things like, you know, you can do trees and flowers and, you know, all the plants and that. Or you can do reptiles like the snakes and all that. Or, you, you know, concentrate on uh, maybe the big five. It's all, it's all different. Um, but it's always nice just to get a general idea of everything because you need to. Everything kind of fits in somehow. And... Uh, so yeah, I mean I've been guiding for about 18 years now, and uh, you know, and we all start clear. Back in the days, in 18 years ago, we had a, a certain camp that we used to go to. It used to be called Nkombi Camp, there in the southern side of the Sabi Sands, and we had to go for like a ranger selection. They called it a ranger selection camp, and then we went for that. And then of course they choose people that wants to, that's got the passion and that wants to kind of, you know, get into the bush. Because uh, they don't want somebody that doesn't enjoy the job or enjoy the, doesn't enjoy nature. And then he becomes a guide and he sees this as now, oh, but this is now boring. No, they want to get into here where you, everything is interesting. Birds, animals, tracks all different kinds of things um yeah, yeah well, i'm gonna go treehouse dam road nothing 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 has crossed that's that's the interesting part about this part here now nothing's crossed south all those two leopards so so what do we do here best thing is the, at the moment i'm thinking because they came into this drainage line so no, it's just a butterfly. <laughs> well, a guy did I say any plants that make you feel itchy? Yeah, I'm sure there is. There's a there's a lot of plants around there that makes you itchy. So I'm sorry, uh, I'm just trying to see something. Yeah. There's a lot of plants that make you feel itchy around this side. You've got to just uh, be careful on which plants you're going to pick up and which plants you're going to taste. You've got to have a professional with you, a person that knows 
All right, let's go to Chad. Welcome everybody, where we have indeed found a male leopard. I know Cedric is uh, looking for this leopard, so I'm just going to radio him quickly and let him know. Cedric, Chad Cedric. Uh, Shibamu Road, Philemon's cut line. Going south. Okay, well, that's exciting, everybody. I was just moving out of the area where Cedric was, and we managed to find one of the leopards that he was looking for. But how amazing is this? What an amazing animal. Down the road. So there was an amazing sighting this morning of two male leopards in this area with a warthog kill. And so you might find that this leopard might be going back towards where that warthog was. Quite a lot of birds alarm calling off to the right hand side, and that's why this male leopard might have just stopped. How beautiful is that? So, this is the a leopard called the tortoise pan male. And he's a dominant male in this area. Watch there as he rubs his face in the tree, lifts his tail, and scent marks. That's a territorial display. Oh, sorry, a territorial marking, not display. So he's marking his territory. Sometimes they'll even rasp, so it's a vocalization. But let's keep going. Let's keep up with this leopard and see where he is going. It's amazing the pure strength you, you can see in this leopard as it is walking. It just looks like a fierce animal. I mean, able to take up carcasses into the trees. Very, very strong. You can see also quite a big dewlap, which is that the skin hanging underneath his neck. As Cedric, we now come in. As Cedric, just stand by. Oh. As Cedric, we... Okay. The radio is clearly not working, but Cedric's now coming down. Down this road. He did change direction. Okay, but let's keep going. Jared, it might be even worth going to Cedric if he's going to walk towards him. Might be nice to even cross over to Cedric. Maybe you can have him walking towards you, which would be quite amazing. Okay, I'm going to send you over to Cedric and have him walk towards you. All right, so yeah, so I did not know that Chad was in the area as well, but uh, yeah, so this is exactly I was going to do this little block, and here comes Tortoise Pan all the way down Treehouse Dam Road. So he's heading still pretty much in the direction of uh, Treehouse. I'm sure that uh, Mulwati went down here. Um, he is salivating, typical with leopards. They will start salivating once they um, have a confrontation with another one. All right, well. All right, let's just... Oh. <laughs> Did not even know Chad was on this road. All right, looks like he's just going to lie down there. Oh, let's just stop here. All right. 
And I hear the, the Franklins and everything is going crazy here in the inflow of Trials Dam. I've got, I've got a feeling that uh, Mulwati might still be right here. You can see how uh, Tortoise Man is now busy scraping his hind legs. And uh, I've got a feeling that uh, Mulwati, the other male leopard, is just in the inflow. And I don't know, I don't know when last I've actually seen Tortoise Pan here at Trials Dam, eh, Paul? I don't think I've actually ever seen him this side, this far east. This is the furthest east, east I've seen him. The closest I've seen him here was maybe, mm, maybe just west of Trias Dam, not on the eastern side of Trias Dam. Yeah, I know, he's not a happy boy. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. Africam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. These guys primarily are sticking to their grasses, and uh, I've always, I've always had this thought. This topic came up the other day, um, and I've always had this thought. Can you imagine if everything was the opposite? So, say for example, lions eat grass, leopards eat grass, cheetahs browse. No, let's say that the leopards will browse because they climb trees all the time. So, leopards build the browsers. Can you imagine if rhinos, elephants, hippos were all meat eaters? Christopher, it is my pleasure to be able to share this with you. This is a very special, special sighting. I think all rhino sightings are special just because of the fact of how endangered they are. And it's very important to spread awareness of how endangered they are and to try and help prevent these type of unusual activities. That's it. I know those don't eat meat, otherwise uh, the human pop would definitely have been kept under control <laughs> from very long ago.
Well, you can see Tortoise Pan is pretty much uh, sniffing on every single bush here because he knows that he hasn't been in this area before. So what he's doing now, he's sniffing every bush, he's leaving his scent behind. Oh, a bit old yawn as well. can imagine he had a, quite a, a hectic uh, morning. And he's still listening out. I won't be surprised if he's still not trying to follow more whitey, the other male leopard. And you can still see his dewlap is still quite swollen, but he's walking way better compared to yesterday or evening uh, last, or last night. He had, he had a bit of a limp on his front uh, left leg, but you can see he's walking more with, uh, with ease for now. Wow, what a, what, what's that? It's just, it's just playing outside now. Oh, see, watch, look how he looks there. See, I heard those Franklins here. I'll tell you more, what is at this inflow? You can see he's listening down here. And I heard squirrels and Franklins going crazy here um, just before we came up, uh, up this road. Now is Mawati, the other male leopard, is he going to try his utmost to try and push Tortoise Pan out from here? I don't know. It seems like Tortoise Pan is pushing more so than, uh, than Mawati. All right. Oh, I, uh, uh, sorry, Lu Luanda, I did not copy that. I just heard Rudy about something about a fight. That's Ludi or Rudy. I can't hear a thing. Once again, scent marking, typical with leopards, you know, if he wants to leave his scent behind you, he wants to make sure, leave his scent, spray on it, maybe rub the neck like that now, just leave his scent behind, at least he knows that if that other male comes here now, he's like, ah, oh, why are you scent marking here, you know, this is my area, this is my territory, so uh, he's got a point to prove you at the moment. Alright, so we're approaching Treehouse Dam now. I'm just looking carefully around you. Seven, can I smell anything rotting in the area? No, Carson, I don't smell anything. Can you, Paul? No, 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 there's nothing rotting in this area. No. This smell nature. You know, I smell dung. You know, nice... Uh, fresh urine and clean air I can see what you there we go send walking against that one ah wonderful let's continue uh, he's, he's, oh, he's sitting now there looking straight across so I've had the uh, leopards like euphorbia male and the raven's court male many years ago or not many years about three years ago one was on the southern side of the sand river the other one was on the northern side of the sand river and they just uh, looked at each other and they just walked parallel with one another growling rasping and I never had any confrontation He's looking slow that side. Ah, oh, more what is here. Somewhere in this drainage line. Oakley, it depends on the, uh, it depends on the area. It's, you know, sometimes you can take a leopard. Look, it's usually when they leave the area of origin or of their birth, place of birth, and they get pushed out. It takes them maybe till, but when they get to about four years old, 
four years old before they actually start uh, setting up a territory. They look for a void or like an area where they feel that they can start off small and then start expanding. And then uh, you can see he's watching. You want to see what he's watching. You can see he's really focused on something there. No problem, Jared. Sorry, Jared's just telling me, giving me some info quickly there. Just giving, just giving him a shout out there. It's, it's all good. All right. So now he's going straight to the inflow. All right. Well, now we we'll have to go into low range again. What do you think? I'm going to go around this way. I'm going to go around this way. I'm just going to keep my eyes peeled. to try and get through here somehow. All right. All right, so he's just watching out there. I'm also just keeping my eyes peeled to see if I get to see, see any other movement. Now you must remember male leopards, are t uh, and even females, a leopard in general is, t is solitary. So, Always see them mainly walking by themselves, unless it's like this now, two males that's busy fighting, or if it's a, a female and cubs, or it's a male and female that's busy mating. No, don't go that way. Uh, so I think he wants to go for a drink now. Uh, Dion, yes, uh, just got a TP at the moment here at Trials Dam. Go that side. Just hold on, uh, muscles and paw. I just want to make sure I'm not going to tip over here. Mm. It's going to be the best like that. Huh? Yeah, it's going to be the best for that. Of course, he's. Just quenching his thirst for the for the afternoon. I can imagine he has been quite a busy boy, so nice just to come here to the dam where a little bit of a few puddles are around here. I'm taking a nice little drink. This is my favorite, favorite male, or favorite leopard in all. I just love his size, I just love the way he is. And I love all leopards, trust me, I love all leopards, but I just, for some reason, I have grown very attached to this, uh, to this male. But yeah, I'm so glad uh, that all the kids that you have uh, joined us this afternoon, thank you so much for comments and questions. And, uh, it has been fantastic. Please remember to join us once again on a Monday afternoon. Same place, same time, 3.30 to 4.30 for the kids' drive. But if uh, you want to continue watching this beautiful male leopard and uh, the other things that we are going to pick up for the afternoon, please stay tuned so we can continue. But we are going to end the kids' uh, drive with a beautiful water span. All right, well, what a way to start and last one on old Chad also coming into the area and uh, giving me a hand on these leopards. You can see him salivating 
Well, that's saliva that's coming down on the side of his mouth, typical with leopards. That's having a bit of a, a standoff or confrontation with another one. I'm just trying to work out how we're going to move around that side. I don't want to lose him. We might have to go through here. Go through here. I don't want to see. Hey. Marking his territory. Making sure. There we go. He's going to roll now there as well. <laughs> He's really making sure. <laughs> oh, Alaska, I think, yeah, well, the, he's got uh, Nene. Um, Nene is uh, Shadulu's cub. That's his cub. And then he's got cubs with uh, Malcolm Sava, another female called Malcolm Sava. I don't know uh, how the cubs are doing. So we don't really get too much updates on those leopards on the west there. You know, now and again we do. But, uh, you know, we... We're not 100% sure of some of them. And then uh, Tiani, you did have cubs with Tiani, a beautiful leopardess outside on Elephant Plains, but she lost her cubs through or due to Nkormas. Yeah, this, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got my eyeballs <laughs> scanning here big time, hey, Paul. I've got a feeling that... Uh, I'm going to see another male approaching very soon. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the other male, Mulwati, is a, a little bit, or not a little bit, way more, how can I say, um, nervous for vehicles, especially if there's more than two vehicles, or two or more, and he gets a little bit nervous. That's why we're just keeping our distance from tortoise pen at the moment, so in case the other male leopard does uh, approach him or is in the area that we're not on top of them so and you can see how the way he's looking into this little this section here it's uh, I won't be surprised if it's what is it's just behind him yeah And he's taking full advantage of this now, being so far east, away from his uh, normal territory. But not far. Okay, I'll, I'll crow's fly from his, say, from his eastern, his eastern boundary of his territory. It is maybe, give and take, I say, about 300 meters uh, west from where we are now. Um, so, in other words, I feel that he is out this out of his territory at the moment, as I said, for two years I haven't seen, I haven't seen Tortoise Pan here at uh, Triars Dam. I think he might have been here once, but um, I'm not too sure of the circumstances. Uh, just, young, uh, just got Tortoise Pan here, make your way a second. Uh, here's another vehicle that's coming into the area. I'm just waiting for this other face to appear out of the bushes here. <laughs> Ooh, Nadia Leluca's father. Whoa. Well, now you've got me there. Leluca's father. So, of course, Leluca's mother is Tiani. And the father. Mm. Mm. Isn't it Tingana? Am I right or wrong there? Please send uh, in your answer on that because I think it's Tingana. I think Leluca's father is Tingana. Or it could be Tortoise Pan. Or it could be Tortoise Pan. Luluka is, she should be about four years now. Three and a half, or three, actually, actually even younger. Mm, no, I think it could be tortoise pan. Very possible. What do you think, Paul? <laughs> All right, don't worry.
<laughs> I'm sure Luyanda will tell me very shortly. Okay, maybe not. All right, uh, I think uh, we are going to head over to Chad. Uh, Let me see what's happening on his side. Good luck in trying to figure that out, all setters. And a very warm welcome to everybody watching the Sunset Safari and welcome to Juma Private Game Reserve. My name's Chad. On camera today we've got Panda. And we are out and about doing what we do best, trying to find fantastic sightings. And we did find Tortoise Pan and he was walking down the road towards Cedric and we decided to let Cedric have that sighting and we are now on the way to the northwestern parts of Juma where I do believe there was another pack of wild dogs that was seen this morning just north of the boundary and we are going to go into that area and see if we are able to find them from this morning and as you can see it is quite a, an overcast day here on Juma so the chances of them having moved is quite high and hopefully they have moved to onto Juma and not away from Juma. But I couldn't drive past these beautiful impalas. And I know Cedric will be a little bit jealous because this is his favorite antelope. Panda, there is a very young um, impala lamb that's off to the left. It's running to the right. So I was just telling Panda, there's a very young impala lamb that is coming. You'll see it in picture now following mom. Very, very young. How cute is that? <laughs> Just trying to keep up with the herd. And we have actually seen a young impala lamb in this area with its mom. Um, and it was, there was, it was just the mom and her. And so maybe this is the same one that has now joined up with the herd. And I'm a lot happier because this impala lamb is now a little bit safer with a lot more eyes, ears and noses to pick up any predators that might be looking to hunt. But it is also very late in the, the season to have a youngster that small. I mean, if it would be quite nice if we are able to see another impala lamb that might have been born last year, November, late November, December. But it's, it isn't an uncommon thing that happens. Uh, you do often find a few very late arrivals. All these impalas have just pricked their ears up. And they were they were all just staring into the bushes on the right hand side. They seem to be back feeding now. But I mean, the reason I got a little bit excited there is because if these impalas had to spot a pack of wild dogs running towards them, they wouldn't alarm call. They've literally got no time to alarm call. Whereas, like, if they see a leopard, they'll then they will then be able to alarm call at the leopard, keep an eye on that leopard, and if the leopard starts to run towards them, they'll then be able to run off. But with a wild dog. I mean, they've got literally no time to alarm call as wild dogs are extremely fast. Are you a wildlife fanatic glued to YouTube for your daily dose of animal antics? Then welcome to Africam's wildlife community. By joining our YouTube memberships, you get no ads, just wild live streams, chat with other bush fans, get early access to exciting camera spots, and flex your wildlife knowledge with fun quizzes. Visit Africam's YouTube channel and click the join button now.
amazing to still see quite a lot of water um, that's just lying in some puddles and things like that on the side of the road. I think once we do start to get some nice clear skies and a lot of sun, I think it is going to dry up quite quickly. But it's always nice to see some water. And we might then have uh, some animals that are going to be wallowing in those. Maybe things like warthogs. Hyenas also love to wallow. Buffaloes, rhinos, even maybe an elephant. It really is entertaining to see all those animals wallowing. Especially if you can get a small little family of warthogs wallowing. Mom and dad and the youngsters. Very, very cute little warthogs, piglets. Probably one of my favorite small baby animals that we do see out here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are here with us at Amakala Private Game Reserve, where we are live at a meerkat den. We are waiting for these amazing little creatures to pop out. So far, no luck. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome, my name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera, and we are hopefully going to be your eyes and ears this afternoon. So far, we are sitting here, like I said, waiting for our beautiful meerkats to pop out. But we're not too sure. It's possible that they are also out feeding, foraging, getting some food for the day as uh, that's what they do on lovely sunny days but there's always somebody around the den it's not the only meerkat den that we have here if i'm not mistaken we have one two three we have four four to five meerkat dens all spread out Amakala. Now, the one, there's two dens that are very close to each other that we suspect the meerkats are bouncing from one den to another. Uh, obviously, you know, switching, chopping and changing. Maureen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a lovely warm day here at Amakala. We trust you are doing well. When I say warm, it is scorching. It is very warm. And uh, well, there is a, a bit of a breeze, but the breeze is also a warm breeze, a berg wind, so it's not doing much to us. But we are nonetheless doing well. We are thriving and uh, looking for animals. Well, meerkats often make their dens uh in those that others have dug now this is not really something that was dug there was sort of a lot of kind of stones i imagine these stones would have been here from the days when this field the fields kind of surrounding us here have terraces so i'm assuming this is all the stones that would have been plowed out of the lands so that uh, crops could have been planted there uh, obviously you don't want to have stones in and amongst your your lands all right we are going to sit here we're going to send you over to a duma where cedric has a leopard Thank you, Eric. Here we are still with uh, this beautiful, stunning, majestic brute of a male leopard, tortoise pan. And he's just still resting here next to the water. He's still looking up in, uh, in flow. We are just being very patient here at the moment. And uh, I can't ask for a better way to 
We'll start our afternoon sunset safari with a continuation from this morning's saga between him and another male leopard called Mulwati. But now clearly that uh, tortoise pan, this male leopard, <coughs> has pushed quite far into Mulwati's territory here now. Does that suggest that he is not scared? Does that suggest that he is up for for that fight? Uh, clearly, they did not have a boxing match this morning during the uh, during the day between the safaris. Because if they did have a boxing match, trust me, I've seen le male leopards after a fight. You'll see blood around the neck and the shoulders. Uh, the gold turns to red with all the blood. But he hasn't shown any sign of new scarring on him. So I suggest I think they have avoided one another's uh, claws and teeth for now. But now he's just very much content at the moment. And now and again you'll see him, he quickly lifts his head, he hears something and he looks straight up, up the drainage line here. Oh, yeah, this is going to be this going to be very interesting to see really what plays out here. Are we going to see tortoise pan pushing? See, watch again. Are we going to see tortoise pan pushing east again to Treehouse Dam? Is he going to say, well, I'm going to try and push, expand my territory a little bit further out? And must remember, he's still young. He's only seven and a half years old. Compared to the other male leopard, Mulwati is now I think ten. So yeah, this boy is younger. So. But he's fully grown. Both males are fully grown, of course, but uh, I just feel that tortoise pan is going to try and expand. And we can still see he's got that little bit of a, a swollen dewlap. So what I've heard, he was in another confrontation with another leopard not too long ago, actually a couple of days ago down south in Londolozi. So it just seems like uh, El Tortoise Pan is becoming the the UFC fighter of uh, of the Sabi Sand. And even prior to that, so it's easy to identify Tortoise Pan by there's a, a mark on his left nostril. And uh, that was created by a fight that he had with another male. I don't know who it was. I think someone said it was Kunyuma. Uh, if I'm not, I might be mistaken with that one, but uh, yeah. So he's, he knows he knows uh, the art of uh, of martial arts, <laughs> leopard arts, leopard martial arts. So he's just repositioning himself. Beautiful. Just want to make sure we want to make sure the other vehicle's not going to go too far. And yeah, I just watched the, I think the western side of that inflow, I've got a feeling on that side, it might, might be Mawati there, because yeah, it keeps on looking up there. Sorry there, uh, Luanda, just go with that again, I'll just quickly... I was chatting to the other guide across the dam. Liesl is gorgeous, and I think if you actually saw the, some of the screenshots from this morning, maybe or if you were watching Wild Earth this morning, and you saw the two of them together, you actually see how gold he is compared to Mulwati. Mulwati, the other male leopard, is much lighter in colour. Much lighter in colour. And you can actually see the, the sizes between the two. Now, who do you think is larger? If you watched this morning's uh, Sunrise Safari and you saw the, some of the screenshots, 
please let us know who do you think is a bigger leopard. I still feel tortoise pan is <coughs> bulkier, definitely bulkier compared to Mulwati. That's my opinion. I looked at the thousands of screenshots today, thousands. And uh, thanks to everybody for those screenshots. So, yep, so there will be a poll on uh, hashtag Wild Earth, go on to hashtag Wild Earth, on to Twitter or X. And uh, yeah, let us know. Mawati, Tortoise Pan, which one is larger? Which one do you think is a bigger leopard from those screenshots that you saw this morning or if you're watching the Sunrise Safari? Put my mark down there, please, uh, Jared. Uh, thank you, tortoise pan. Oh, doing a little bit of yoga here. That's it, Jared. <laughs> there's no favoritism going here, not at all. Trust me, there's no favorite. I, I love Mulwati as well. He's a, uh, he's a, he's just a, he's a leopard that's acting like a leopard. You know, he's. He's very elusive, he's very secretive. That's why we call him the ghost of uh, Juma. Compared to Tortoise Pan now, this male leopard, he is very, as you can see, very relaxed with vehicles. And um, yeah, so we just get that different kind of viewing experience between the two. <laughs> Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage, to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature, caught in the act. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. All right, looks like he's just moved past us. Let's turn around. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, let's get out here. First gear. Is he gonna go for another drink or is he just gonna go right past? 
It'll be interesting to see where he pushes from here. I'm sure he, I'm sure he's going to start pushing west again. Uh, sorry, my oh, comms just broke. I'm gone. Sorry, you are right there in full. Alright, I think he's just going to mark territory, yeah. I'm going to see what he does from here. Alright. So, there's another vehicle that's of course joined us as you can see, so enjoying the sighting. Alright, so he's going straight west again. I think yeah, it's, that's what I thought he was going to do. Come this side and go back west again. Maybe he's maybe he's maybe he's just done what he maybe he's done what he wanted to do. Um, so he's so gonna quickly turn around, yeah. Okay, let's follow. Yeah, we're gonna just see where he goes. Um, as I said, we're not too sure where. Uh, he's still just kind of making his presence known here. Sorry, I just want to let this other vehicle as well see. All right, we're not going to try and put too much pressure, too much pressure on him. So we're just going to leave, give him a bit of space. Tadiwa, you say TP is uh, definitely bigger from the screenshots that we had this morning from the two. Yeah, well, the two are right next to each other, so you could definitely make out which one was bigger. And also, tortoise pan is definitely like a more of a, a brute, bulkier. Shorter, but more of a, a bulkier a mass on his um, muscles there, compared to, I think, more white, he might be a little bit taller. So I'm just going to wait till he see what he does here. Yeah. He's just snipping on that uh, little bush there, so maybe, maybe more white. He might have been in this little area recently and marking against that bush. You can see how he's just picking up on the scent there, nose down on the ground. Quite, must probably on the side now. We can't see it, but must probably doing a Fleming grimace now, where he actually rolls back his lips and lets that scent go over a gland called the marrow nasal gland. And it gives him exactly the, the status and the ID of exactly that individual that he's sniffing out at the moment. All right, looks like he's going again. All right, we're just going to go a little bit forward and all that. Just want to see if there's no other leopard tracks coming down here. Yeah? Because he was sniffing on this bush quite a bit here now. Sorry, I'm just going to try and give the other vehicle... Uh, Jared, I just want to try and give the other vehicle some space as well. So I'm going to just do a little bit of leapfrogging. And uh, let the other vehicle with their guests uh, also get to see tortoise pan, which is fair enough. All right, so I'm going to let the other vehicle continue. Other vehicle go ahead there. So yeah, so this is a um, African weeping wattle that we've got in front of us, and it's a <laughs> it's a beautiful tree known as a toilet paper tree as well. <laughs> well um, but yeah, uh, we're gonna let as I say, we just that's what we do. We just let the do the typical leapfrogging um, to so give the other vehicle the opportunity to do that because they're gonna give us that opportunity when we do go live again. 
so it's, it's called a courtesy yes yes all right um, all right <laughs> <laughs> it's grey, that's correct. It's very grey that side and poor. I fully agree. A lot of greyness up in the sky. <laughs> maybe Richard, maybe TP doesn't see more white because, uh, yeah, he is the ghost. Very, very possible, very, very possible. And let's see, where. Oh, there he is. Ooh. I thought he was, I thought he went in there. And he's just walking down. So going typical now, exactly what I thought. Get to Trials Dam and now what he's doing, he's going straight back west again. He's going back to his territory. Alright, let's... Noop, noop. Oh, I'm not going to get onto the phone now. Sorry, there, Luganda. Oh, we're going to go in those people's shots here. All right, so on the 24th of uh, March, yes, it's a town hall at 7 p.m. Central African time. 7 p.m. Uh, sorry, Jared. Uh, with uh, Andre and uh, Jamos, and they're going to discuss all about the new vehicles and the plans. So please make sure that you do join 7 p.m. 24th of March. And it is for everybody, open to everybody. Oh, it looks like, yeah. Let's continue. We are celebrating World War Today with a five day special. Immerse yourself in exclusive Live at the Waterhole content. Keep up with the wild waters of the world with special guests. Tune in for live drives around the deep dive into our watering holes. Dive in this World War Today with Wild Earth.
welcome back everybody and we're just at this uh, beautiful waterhole with a pot of hippos we came to see if there was any activity from a herd of elephants but there doesn't seem to be too much that's happening around us right now We're just having a listen out we might be able to hear any breaking branches of animals coming down towards the water or elephants in particular coming down towards the water also when they do come down towards the water they get quite excited so they often will trumpet as they are coming down towards the water There was one hippo that was having a little bit of fun there where you can see all the ripples. But as soon as we pan the camera over to him, he goes down. It's also a gray heron that is fishing just off to the right hand side and uh, I saw him going trying to catch a fish or any frogs and I mean after the rain there's quite a lot of activity from frogs and insects and things so I'm sure this grey heron is very happy that there's lots of movement it would be amazing to see this grey heron catch Rowan, my favorite part of Juma is probably the Molwati drainage line or the Molwati River. Just is such a beautiful river system. Um, but also then the western parts where it's a little bit more open and it, it almost has like quite a wild feel to it. Like you never know what you're going to come across. I mean, I've seen there in that area wild dogs, leopard. Uh, the Talamati breakaways, rhinos, elephants, wild dogs. So it's a it's a very wild sort of part of Juma. And so that would probably be my second favorite part. But there is just something about a a drainage line or a dry river bed that really does excite me. And that, that Mawati River runs all the way from Juma down to into Mala Mala and eventually into the Sand River. And I've spent a year and a half driving in it a little bit further south from Juma and had many amazing sightings of leopards, lions, wild dogs, basically at all. So quite a, a very productive riverbed. And see this grey here and literally looks like it's a statue it hasn't moved a muscle probably eyeing out a fish or frog waiting for it to come into reach before it uses that long neck and beak to catch it It's pretty special to see how still it is. What do you think, Panda? Frog or fish? Panda says fish. I say frog. Okay, while I sit here and wait and see if this heron does get a fish or a frog, I'm going to send you to Amakala and have a check in with Eric. So we are here having a look at what is known as the Amakala Basin. This is the sweet felt area 
of the reserve and soon to be a very colorful area that's going to be filled with royal carpet, which is a type of fechi that is a beautiful purple color. I'd say in the next, um, in the next two months or so, there'll be lots of it inhabiting this area. The only reason why I say that is because I can really see some of the green from the royal carpet. It is a succulent that loves the plains down there. You will never find it outside, well, you can find it outside of the basin, but you won't find it in very many places. Up in the dune forest, there's far too much sand. You'll find different types of fechis there, but you won't find the royal carpet. Um, you'll find it mostly down here where the soil is perfect for them. And you'll find a lot of our plains game also inhabit this area. Obviously, we aren't seeing very many from up here. It's still very, very hot. About maybe 10 minutes ago, uh, when Morgan and I left the uh, meerkat uh, kind of colony, we were coming to the ridge line and we were basically at a higher point, dropping down to a lower point, and the temperature picked up. It, it, what it, it felt like it did because it was cooler up there and now we're sitting here in even more heat so we don't know what it's like down there um, it may be even hotter we don't we don't know we're not going to investigate we're not going to go down there uh, today we are going to continue along this ridge line but we just thought we'd stop and sit up here and see what we can see down there always nice to have a a bit of a look from a higher point. What ocean creature reminds me of a leopard or a buffalo? Is that the question? I'm pretty sure. Hmm. A leopard? Oh, okay, well, uh, it would have to be maybe something like a killer whale. I think something like a killer whale, yes, because a killer whale, I mean, buffalo, they have a bit of a temper. They're very strong and they're big. Uh, leopard is an apex predator. It, uh, it ambushes its prey with immense skill and takes down its prey, no problem. So it would have to be a killer whale, I think. Uh, killer whales being big, being strong, and being the apex predators in the ocean. There is nothing, nothing you can do to fight back a killer whale if you were in the ocean. Right, we're gonna send you back to Cedric. We're going to continue on our path. All right, so according to the pole. This uh, male, tortoise pan, is uh, the largest between uh, of the two. Of, of course, uh, Mulwati, the male, male leopard, and tortoise pan, this male leopard. Ah, what was the percentage there, Jared? You want to see what the percentage on the pole? So 58 percent for tortoise pan and 41 for Mulwati. Yay! Well done, my boy. You see, you are larger than Mulwati. Now I'm just, but I'm still like Mulwati, but I love tortoise pan. Okay, this is our last uh, moment with him, as he's going straight south now towards Little Gari. Bye, my boy. All right. So he's going straight into Little Gari now. Um, Little Gari is just a, a, a property that's just south of uh, Juma, and, he's, and we do not have traversing there, so he's gone straight, straight south now towards that property. All right, let's go back to uh, Tortoise Pan. I mean, oh, Tortoise Pan, Treehouse Dam, without Tortoise Pan. <laughs> All right, let's head over to Chad to see what's happening that side. Welcome back everybody. We're still sitting 
at this dam and there's a three-banded plover that's been running around the vehicle and I've just been discussing with Panda what is this three-banded plover doing because it almost looks like it's it's acting like it's injured and then moving away and then chittering its beak together so I'm not to be honest with you I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is doing but uh, what I can think is maybe there's a nest around here and there is a potential predator and maybe it's trying to distract that predator from the nest if this three-banded plover does go out of picture we'll just continue driving but it's very interesting what it was doing it almost looked like a little display but then when it does walk fine it walks perfectly fine did it look like there's a nest there it almost looks like now that it's sitting on a nest i just don't want to and unfortunately the vehicle is parked where there's a bit of the vehicle sticking out but it almost looks like there's now a little nest there and I wonder if the, it's maybe sitting on the eggs now because I'm sure those eggs are very camouflaged in the rocks and dirt there but what a beautiful little bird So Enzo, you're asking what bird builds the smallest nest and I think it would be the uh, pendulum tit, if I'm not mistaken. I know that is the smallest bird, but I'm not 100% sure about the smallest nest. I might have to go to my book and have a look, see if I can find which bird builds the smallest nest, but I will get back to you on that i mean there are lots of birds that build that i know build big nests i mean the hammercorp for instance builds the biggest nest but i haven't actually thought about the smallest nest i mean there's some birds that don't really build a nest they lay their eggs on the ground just like this three-banded plover would i'm actually gonna probably just sit here and wait maybe see if this three-banded plover does move again and then we'll be able to see if that is the nest but a, a strange little sighting that we had let's see it's not just about the bigger things out here we do always take notice of the smaller things the beautiful little markings that red eye and then those bands along the chest. Why don't you move for us, little plover, just so I can see if you've got some eggs there. Because I'm 100% certain that this bird is all right. I mean, I suppose we do know that you are also here. We've given you lots and lots of attention. It's time for the smaller things. But we'll probably wait here for another minute or two and if this plover doesn't move off, then we might just move off. And I mean, we do visit this waterhole pretty regularly, so I will keep everybody up to date if we do find the nest. And I mean, it's a very small bird, so would be special to see the chicks i can only imagine how small those chicks must be it does seem like this bird has settled down there i think panda let's uh, maybe just leave this bird Okay, we're actually going to stick here for one more minute. 
Maureen indeed. Stunning red eyes. I mean, it's amazing to be able to, this bird's probably four or five meters from us, but the cameras that we use here on Wild Earth, amazing clarity on how you can see each and every detail of this bird. And often when we do try and frame up birds, they, as soon as we go live, they then move away from the camera. But this bird seems like it likes to spend time on the camera. This is On Safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. You can see there's a little road on the other side there that we use to obviously peer into the river line to see if there's anything down there. What is also down there is a, a path on the other side that the elephants use, but we can't drive our cars there because we can't get our cars there. Quite often we can spot bush buck from up here down there. And uh, one of our guides was lucky enough on one of the drink stops to have spotted a leopard walking down there as well. And this is also generally a place where one could potentially find a leopard as well um, because while well, it's nice and shrubby and especially the leopards that we have down here, the Cape leopards, like to stay out of the way of others including humans and other animals. Um, they will, you know, sneak around that thicket line there, use that elephant path, and then there's also a series of caves and uh, little crevices that it can climb up on the side of this mountain where nobody is going to get to it. Nobody will see it. Go away, fly.
All right. Oh, there's a nice male kudu, yeah? It's a lovely male kudu. Let's see if we can get this male kudu. A big guy, uh, like a kudu bull. Lovely horns on him. Let's see if we think we can get him. Uh, we're going to just get a part of his body at the moment because there's no other other spot that we can at least view this male kudu. He's all by himself. You can just see his hindquarters sticking out from that Natal Gwari. Uh, he's busy feeding on some of the nice little lush leaves around there. But they usually sometimes travel in like little bachelor herds. So you'll find two, three, four males together. But uh, I only see just the one at the moment. Maybe the others might be in the thick thickets here. Uh, he's not he's not playing ball game here. Hmm. Oh okay, we might get him coming through there. There it is, there he is. Well, it's a live and interactive show, so if you've got any comments or questions that you want to send through to us, if you are watching on the Wild Earth website, make sure you do register with us so you can send those comments and questions through. Or else, if you want to have a good old chat with us, make sure that you join us on our hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter, also known as X, or you can go onto the YouTube channel. And he is gone, just like that. Bada bangsh, bada boom. <laughs> All right, let's move back. So I'm going to go slowly towards Twin Dams, that area. I'm going to follow up. It's amazing. I think old Tortoise Pan came in. He pushed Mulwati a little bit further east, and he came further east. And he's like, "All right, I've just uh, I've done my job for the day." And now he is heading back to his his territory. Very interesting. Interesting. I like that. That's what makes it so so much fun following these leopards. That's why it's so nice to know you know know them by name because then you know who's pushing who, how far they're moving. And it just it just becomes a, the story for all of us, and it's, uh, I think that's so so important. Alright, so what's what's next? What is next on the cards? I think as I said I'm gonna to go to Twin Dam. I'm just gonna go sit a little bit around that dam, take a look what's happening around there. Um, did you see this? Did you hear that? Uh, See, I know, I heard what, uh, like, what do you like to see next, but I couldn't get the name. Mm. Lincoln. Luanda, just go with that name again. It is Lincoln. Linton. Linton. Uh, Linton. Linton, what uh, would we like to see next? Well, yeah, anything goes. I think after. This morning and this afternoon's drive, anything goes. Um, I will go. I'll, I'll be happy with anything, <clears throat> like the male kudu, maybe some birds, maybe an art fox somewhere. <laughs> if it was an art fox, then I will. Then I would say, uh, what is today? The, today is the. Then I would say the 15th of March would be uh, Amazingzing. <laughs> if, it, if it has to end off with an art fork. Well, you never know. You never know. That's why I always get, uh, always have to expect the unexpected yeah, in uh, in the bush. No matter where you are in the bush, in the wild, things can uh, can surprise you. I mean, things can surprise you very quickly and very easily.
Maybe I'll Clalumba. How about that? Okay, now I'm getting too, too picky here. What would you like to see him for? Hmm. Elephants. Uh, wild dogs. Ah, maybe wild dogs or elephants for um, Paul. All right, well, let's see where this road takes us. Anyway, while we're going to head straight towards uh, Twin Dams, maybe we get lucky with some elephants or wild dogs there for mussels and paw. Let's head over to Chad to see what's happening on his safari. And Paul, I also want to see wild dogs and elephants. I'm glad you have said that. And we just left that waterhole that we were just at. And as soon as the camera went off, the three-banded plover did stand up and move a little bit away. But then it came back to the nest. And we were able to see two little eggs. So I was correct in what I was saying. Very special to have sort of put the story together knowing what this that three-banded plover was doing was trying to distract a predator away from the nest but then it came and sat back and it was all good so we didn't want to spend too much time around there we wanted to just let that three-banded plover do its thing and i've tried to find what the the bird with the smallest nest is and it says that it's the hummingbird that's got the smallest nest, but I'm still will look for the smallest bird in South Africa and what that nest is. I think the viewer was Enzo, if I'm not mistaken. He was asking about the smallest nest. But like and Paul said, he said he would love to see elephants. I would also love to see elephants. So we are just driving around bumbling along here on Juma seeing if we are able to find a herd of elephants Mila are you asking about the coloration of the the different eggs so I think the, the coloration will depend on um, what bird it is and where they lay in their eggs. So, I mean, for instance, that plover that we just saw, that three-banded plover, they lay their eggs in the dirt or in the, the sand. And so that brownish tinge color to that egg is because it's going to be then be camouflaged and other animals then hopefully won't be able to distinguish that it is an egg, but I'm not 100% sure what exactly gives it that color. I mean, I'm sure there, there might be something inside that gives it that specific color to it. I mean, I've seen birds with blue eggs before. Um, I've seen birds with some white eggs. They've all got different colors. You know, something specific that gives it that specific color to every bird just dependent on where they are laying their eggs. Look left, look right. Nothing there, nothing down there. Would be amazing if we do come a, across a four-way junction like that and we look down the one side and there's pack of wild dogs running up towards us. Wouldn't that be fantastic? I haven't actually seen too much movement of uh, elephants in the last couple of days since the rain here on Juma. And I mean, there's lots of water around on Juma, big water holes where these elephants can drink. But they might just be spending time elsewhere. We'll give them a couple of days. I'm sure they will be back. 
or maybe tonight. I think it might be a lot sunnier tomorrow and a little bit hotter. So maybe they'll come back to Juma to the bigger water holes and spend time then around there. Oh, Lara Moore, you're saying that the emu eggs are bright green in color. That's very interesting. I wonder exactly why the, the eggs are the, a green color. Very interesting. I'll definitely do a little bit of uh, research. What's that in the road? Oh, it's a zebra. Oh, it was a zebra. It does seem to be, yeah, that zebra is galloping off. Interesting enough, that's my first zebra that I have seen here on Juma. And I've been here already 10 days. And it seemed like it just ran away from us. Don't seem to be too relaxed with the vehicles. I would also think that we would see more of those of the the zebras out in the western parts of Juma where it is a little bit more open and there's a lot more grazing opportunity out in the open areas for them but brilliant another one added Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. Driving off into the sunset. How romantic is that? 
<laughs> Although, we shortly will be taking a left, <laughs> not a left or a right. Uh, won't be driving all the way into the sunset. But it is much, it is in our eyes. Seen more birds. The birds are very difficult in Amakala to try and uh, uh, just to try and get on screen. For some reason, they you can't get too close to them. And when they sit perfectly for you, they're too far away. You start inching closer and inching closer, and then they fly away. Or they fly away just before you go live, or five seconds after you go live. We're still on. Uh, Still on the quest to investigate or to try and find more European rollers. I really love to show you that bird. It is so pretty. There we are. To show who asked the question, but can you find Allison Madison? Uh, sunbirds, yes, we find you get the double collared sunbird all over, um, you get the malachite sunbird, uh, the amethyst. Um, there's another one, there's another sunbird, uh, malachite, amethyst, and the double collared. It'll come to me. But those are the three, oh, sorry, those are the three that we see. I can't remember what the fourth one is. Uh, I'll have to go to my bird app and find it. But um, yeah, we do see sunbirds on a, on a regular. Not so much now, we sort of need the flowering. We need the flowering ones, uh, uh, flowering flowers in order to uh, to get the sunbirds out but yep we do have sunbirds they go for the aloes quite a lot so when the aloes are in season that's your best bet go and sit by an aloe with a camera and you get some very nice photos of some sunbirds uh, what else mm, when else do we see the sunbirds yeah most of them you actually see at the lodges because the lodges will have a fair amount of nice beautiful plants in their garden uh, so you will most likely see more of the sunbirds in the garden than you will see out in the field. One thing that I have seen a lot of recently is the stone chats. The stone chats are very, very nice, beautiful, tiny bird, no bigger than that much, I think. Um, and they are my favorite little birds. That and the Malachite Kingfisher. Oh, Kingfishers are awesome birds. I don't know if it's because we share the love for fishing or what it is. Cindy D, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love to be out here, love to share it with you. Um, oh, it's quite enjoyable. Now we're driving through a blue bush forest, which is these little kind of roundish shrubs part of the Fainbos family but do you find that that plant it actually makes the soil quite acidic in its own way but by making it acidic it actually makes the soil a lot easier for itself to grow and for other plants to grow therefore they can expand uh, uh, the area of their operations or of their growing um, and uh, that often does eliminate other plants in the area so you obviously get our areas where there's blue bush they're generally very thick large kind of areas of it anyway we're going to send you back up to Juma with Cedric we're going to continue and hopes that we find something along the way
Thank you, Eric. And uh, yes, we are just slowly heading up to Central. I'm on actually the eastern boundary of uh, Juma at the moment, just to double check this side. Uh, I'm not too sure where Chad had those lion tracks this morning. I know that he said they they did cross out, but I think they might have crossed out in Biffles Hook, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to do the eastern boundary, then I'm going to do maybe just uh, head into the central area of uh, Juma uh, and see if we get any other luck that side. I want to see if we can find some elephants for Mpo. As well, Chad has gone on to Chitwa. Apparently, they had wild dogs this morning around, uh, and, and I think this afternoon, around the staff uh, area. Well, just at the back of the staff uh, uh, compound and Chad is going to go up there towards the airstrip uh, I think Chitwa airstrip just to go and follow up there just now it's a nice cool afternoon now and uh, I'm crossing fingers that it comes right with some wild dogs for the afternoon well, I either tracked them down this morning pretty well so I hope we can do that this afternoon once again. Oh, but I think the evening is going to be very cool. This is like one of the coolest evenings we've had for um, yeah for a long time. You can just feel that this uh, the change of season. It's March now. There you go. It's, uh, look at the tire there. It's still the same, man. Huh? Sorry, I think I think I might have a slow puncture. On my back left to tire, yeah, so I can just feel the vibration. <laughs> we're going to go with that comp that whole thing again. Sorry, I'm going to try and put up here, uh, see if I can get pick up on what you're saying there. Just go through with that whole that whole question again, please. Men to be sad, men's, men's to be meant, meant to be sad, meant to be sad. My scariest encounter in the bush, I think that was uh, with Gert and myself the night we followed the uh, Imbali Pride busy hunting buffalo. Uh, yeah, at Trias Dam, exactly where we had uh, tortoise pan that male leopard this afternoon. And um, with the buffalo, of course, running into the vehicle. I think I've never. Uh, my, my life my life flashed before my eyes there and um, yeah that was uh hail to the blithe spirit bird thou never wert, that from heaven or near it, pourest thy full heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art. Higher still and higher from the earth thou springest, like a cloud of fire the blue deep thou wingest. And singing still dost soar, and soaring ever singest. I do apologize for losing me there. I think we just had a, a dip in uh, signal. But yeah, coming back to the question again, uh, my scariest encounter, and I still say that buffalo was uh, the one that was chased by the Mbali Pride that hit the vehicle, was the one that I really thought um, that, was, that was the end. And um, because with the male lions, as my jingle lions, when they charged us on foot with my tracker, my tracker and myself many years ago, as I said now, because I was on foot, because we get trained you know, with mock charges, lions and all that, and we know what to do. It felt like I had more control with the lions. 
but that night with the buffalo running into into Rusty and to the side here, um, it felt like you know there there was no control. There you there I just had to sit and uh, hope hope for the best. Hope for the best that that buffalo does not come. Yeah, luckily hit here, but not through this spot here, through the open gap. Because if we came through here, that uh, I would have been I would have been tickets. It would have been overs. Good overs. That's it, yeah. So, yeah, that, that is still my 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 scariest my scariest encounter for sure. For sure. So, just checking that the aerial is going to go under this branch here. And bada bang, bada boom. I think my back left tire is. Feeling very funny. I might actually inform myself. Might have to stop here at one of the junctions and just quickly do a bit of a, a tire change. would be pretty amazing if the wild dogs did make an appearance here on this open clearing in front of us and there was a herd of impalas off to our left hand side on the northern end of the sorry the southern end of the airstrip that would be a perfect hunting opportunity for the wild dogs but how amazing was that minute and a half or two minutes of silence it's amazing to take in nature and reflect on the day that we've had. I mean, it's been a phenomenal day. Lots of incredible sightings. Lots of action. Cedric, I think even when he got back to the, the camp this morning for breakfast, he was still shaking with excitement on what he witnessed out there this, this morning with tortoise pan as well as the Milwaukee male and that warthog very very special
Naomi, that would be amazing if we were able to get Kachava while we are in Chatwa. I'm not too sure exactly when last she was seen or where she was seen. But as you know, leopards do move and groove. They sometimes will be at one area in the morning and the afternoon in a completely different spot. So you never know what we might bump into in the next little while. But how magnificent is this view that we've got here? Very, very special. So we'll switch up for another 30 seconds or a minute and then I might just get going and see what else we can find for everybody. So apparently the last time Kuchava was seen was the 13th of January, which is two months ago. So it would be special if I could find her. I know when I was at Mala Mala at one point, I did see her in the northern parts of Mala Mala. So maybe she's been pushed a little bit further south into a different part of the territories of the leopards. But who knows? Okay, Panda, I think let's uh, continue driving a little bit down this airstrip and we will see what we can find. We'll just take it nice and slowly. Maybe those wild dogs come out. Jilly B, I'm glad you've enjoyed uh, this moment after the day's action. It has been a uh, very very action-packed sunrise and sunset safari so I am glad you enjoyed a little bit of Zen time I think Steve uh, also would have enjoyed this moment So the lodge is just off to our left hand side and apparently those wild dogs did settle not far from there. So we're just taking it nice and slowly down the runway, seeing if we can find any sign of them. Because nobody actually looked for them this afternoon. Not too sure where they all went, but I would have gone straight from the lodge to look for them. Especially on a day like today when it's very overcast. I mean the the chances of them moving is pretty good. Okay, as I do continue down the runway, I'm gonna send you back over to Cedric for an update. Thanks Chad, I'm hoping that you get those wild dogs. Well, you never know, as I say, it's, it all depends on nature and what nature wants to show you, but uh, yeah, you might come lucky right at the end there. Alright, I'm just coming through well, on Central, coming through the centre of, uh, of Juma now. Heading slowly west towards our camp area or towards Gauri Dam. I'm just thinking maybe you can, you might get lucky with old Tlalamba, that beautiful leopardess, the queen of Juma. We haven't seen her for a, for a few days or for a week. So I think it's maybe due for an appearance. Oh, we actually saw, well, not even a week, we saw a few days ago lying up in a tree. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Like four days. Sorry, Leander, go that uh, that 
question or comment again. I didn't hear anything coming through there. Nadia, no, no, no updates or no reports of Columba ever mating with Tortoisepan. But then again, we never know. We never know. <laughs> it could be, could be, but uh, uh, there is no reports on that. There is definitely no reports on that. I see buffalo tracks coming down here, running down here, and I know that the Nkuumas were around in this area last night. Hmm. Sorry, I just saw some buffalo tracks, maybe from this morning, maybe just for one. Might be the same buffaloes that we keep on seeing, like two, there's like two or three individuals that's roaming around somewhere on, uh, on Juma. Uh, of course, buffaloes, that is. And it just seems like we keep on missing them somewhere. Oh yeah, coming about a, a, a little bit earlier on, you were know, asking about La Luca. Somebody was asking about La Luca. Uh, okay, so the father of uh, the father of La Luca is uh, uh, presumed to be tortoise pan. So tortoise pan, the male leopard that we saw now this afternoon, is the father of that leopardess known as La Luca. And I heard an update. That Luluka was seen in the west again. So she's still hanging around this area. Beautiful leopardess. Absolutely stunning. She's got really mesmerizing eyes. Oh, beautiful eyes. So she was seen that side. So that was, uh, yeah, so that is a presumed um, the daughter of the tortoise pan. And of course, she's also the daughter of uh, Tiani. And Tiani is the daughter of Tingana. That's correct. And of course, the um, mother of Tiani was Salaheshe. Beautiful leopardess of Salahesh. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's just a, <laughs> it's a rock. I thought it was a little tortoise. <laughs> it looked, looked like a tortoise, Mpo. Look small and cute. Anyway, right, thanks, and Paul. You don't have to carry on looking at me like that. Thank you. All right, so we're slowly approaching Gary Dam. <laughs> Let's just see what's here. What luck do we have tonight? What luck do we have tonight? Uh, Nathan, what part of Juma we won't find a leopard? Well, definitely not in my room. Definitely not in my room. Or in Paul's room. Or any of our rooms. So that part, we won't find a leopard. Other than that, everywhere else. Everywhere else. You will find a leopard. Every, every corner of uh, Juma is... Uh, is fit for a leopard except our rooms and the kitchen Coming through an area called the Stork Crossing is known as Giraffe Crossing. I don't know why. Maybe they saw Giraffe Crossing here. I've got the name Giraffe Crossing. <laughs> it must be. Time for dinner. Oh, it's Friday. So Friday is Bride Day. Oh my word, 
So we always we can we can never wait <laughs> to get back to camp after drive on a Friday because it's a braai day. Typical for South Africans if you don't know what a braai is, it's a barbecue. And uh, of course we've got the braai master there in camp at the moment. And uh, he's putting some uh, nice uh, nice uh, meat on top of the fire there for us tonight. Some pup, you know, polenta. We call it pup here in South Africa. Pup, it's like maize meal with uh, tomato, onion, green pepper, relish and uh, all right I think uh, our directors don't want to hear more about our dinner for the night Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. This is the, where we had our lions this morning, this road that we're going down this. This road that I always say is home to the Bri Pan gang, but I think our Bri Pan gang have left the premises. They left their, their area vacant. And the kudas moved in. So I... Yeah, I can imagine there would be crows around in this area. So this is where those uh, those juvenile, well, those sub-adults were playing with the... Uh, um, were playing with the... that skull, that head of that warthog. Now, for those of you... Hey, 40, goodness, it's, you don't, we don't often, 
We don't often get to see baby kudu like this, you know. It's a, it's a rarity because most of the time mom will actually leave her baby kudu in the bushes. She'll go and feed with the rest of the herd, then she'll come back every now and then to feed the baby. Uh, and they'll repeat this process for actually some months, for about three to four months, until the baby is basically strong enough to, well, not strong enough, they will be strong enough um, after two months, but uh, until the baby is big enough, this is what they will do. Uh, Gemsbok do it as well. Now, I spoke about the Bry, the Bry Pan gang, and the Bry Pan gang is a herd, it's not a herd, you can't really call it a herd, it's four members of the red hartebeest species, two big males, and then there were two small males. It started off with three and then it ended up as four and now it's ended up as none. I don't know where they are. They're usually here at the, this junction of what we call Bushbri Road and uh, Dry Dam. That's why the whole name Bri Pan came up. And we used to see them for the first, yeah, for about two weeks or so every single day. We used to be able to see them here and uh, now they're gone. But it's been in the last two, yeah, you know, in the last week that they've started to disappear away from this area, which is interesting. They may be further down, down uh, this dry, this um, man bush by road, <laughs> or they could be further up the dry dam road. But they are not in their usual spot. Last little bit of sunshine kissing the mountains for this set sorry, this Friday. I don't know what I was about to say Saturday. For this Friday. And I had hoped that we might be able to get some felines on the cards for this feline Friday, but unfortunately we have only got lucky this morning. I think it was just a little bit too hot here at Amakala. Uh, I think some of the other guides were struggling as well to find some animals. We are going to send you back to Cedric. We're going to continue our bumble and maybe we will come across something interesting. We never know. Thanks, Eric, and yes, we are, yes, oh, there's a little one, there's Redders, he's in front, I was trying to see if I can find the little one, a little calf, in front of mom, oh, it's so sweet, look at him, oh, he's like, he's like, mom, I can also walk on the, on the little island, oh, he's coming out for us, hello, oh, that is nice, I hardly ever get to see him outside the water, I think this is like the most I've seen of him, like, you know, while we on safari. I've seen on dam cam, but not while I'm sitting here at the dam itself. Oh, cute little one, staying very close to mom. Mom is not too far behind, just keeping a close eye. There we go. You can see the size difference between... Oh, he's going down. This is nice. This is really special. And I think we've been very fortunate with uh, Little Redders. That's his name, or her name. I don't know if it's a he or she. We're very fortunate with this little youngster being at Gary Dam. So you can always log on to the Juma Dam Cam at night time and uh, you know, keep track of this little one. We did go missing with mom not too long ago for about a few days, well, for three, four days. We went into one another dam called Biffles Hook Dam, and it looks like they made their way back again to Gary Dam. Less, I think it's just less um, stress on the youngster. I think being there at Biffles Hook Dam, there was quite a, a huge pod there and a lot of activity, and I think mom was not too happy with that little one, you know, having a little bit of. Uh, how can I say, like panic attacks outside, and she decided to rather bring him back here. 
Sorry, Luanda, who sent that uh, comment? Sorry, I heard something about uh, yay to see redders. Jelly bee. Jelly bee, yes, nice to see a red is, especially coming out of the water there. The mom keeping a close eye there. Now, now these hippos, mo uh, mommy hippos, if they've got the little ones around you, mm, they can become quite, pre or very, or not quite, they can be very protective. And you can understand, but any mothers are protective over the youngsters. But a hippo as well, whoa. I've had my fair share walking along a dam there in the western sector, not knowing that the mother had a, a youngster there with her. And I went on a bushwalk with my guests, and I was a little bit too close to the water, and not knowing that they were there, and uh, uh, she gave me a proper rev. She came storming towards us, and uh, luckily we could move the guests and everyone away from from the water. and. Uh, just view her at a, a safe distance. And we've got another one at the back there. It must probably be Dewey, the father. I wouldn't be surprised if he is the father. He must be the father of Redders. Linda Poli, I've got not a clue how you got that name. Uh, Linda Poli, I, I think uh, everybody who was watching on Dam Cam and that decided uh, on uh, that name, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, I'm very oblivious on, uh, on, on that situation. So, yeah, maybe somebody can <laughs> assist me on that. So, yeah, I'm not too sure where Redis came from. I think it's just to do with all Oh, okay, so there was a gentleman that was controlling the dam cam who viewed this hippo uh, calf for the first time. And that gentleman that was controlling the dam cam, his name is Redders. So that's where the name comes from, from the gentleman that saw Redders first using the dam cam. Thank you, Jared, appreciate it. Now I know. That's Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act.
just had a rock kestrel flying over us and I can I think there's another one over there which is pretty cool we don't often see the rock kestrels but they are definitely here um, them and the black winged kite pretty similar almost like cousins um, they fly in a very similar type of pattern to each other and they also hover they are the only birds of prey that are known to hover without having to catch a thermal um, in order to catch their prey. They'll hover under them over the middens, wait for a mouse to come up and take out the mouse. I imagine we're gonna start seeing a few birds of prey now as well. This is the perfect time, you know, this is when you start having mice coming out of their holes, looking for food as they go into the night. And in this specific area that we're in, there is an awful lot of uh, uh, black winged kites. And they're really, really cool birds. Very quiet. Well, we still here at to go dam, still watching the hippos and redders. I, I just want to quickly throw out there, I do apologize. I did not know the redders or the lady. My apologies to that. Now we all know. But the redders is so, so cute in this water. He's busy, or well, she's busy, just playing around now and again with mom. A little bit of activity before tonight. Maybe they're going to come out for a little bit. He's swimming between the two adults now. He's busy yawning just now. He's just opening his mouth and giving a good old yawn. Oh, he's going to dad now. Oh, he's not too... Uh, he's like, hey. Well, it's nice at this time of the evening we sit at the dams and the hippos are getting a little bit more active compared to during the day. Andrew, yes, the entire pod will be protective of the little one for sure. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost like if you think about elephants as well, but you know, it's just, it's part of the pod, it's part of the group, it's part of the family. You know, and that little one is uh, getting taken out by something, you know, uh, all the hippos are going to react to it. I actually had a funny enough talking about that now. Many years ago I had a, a wild dog sighting there on a property called Arethusa Shirley's at a dam called Big Dam. And uh, I remembered the wild dogs uh, came to the dam, a big pack, I can't remember how many in that pack. And there was uh, a young, like a juvenile hippo that was on the outskirts, busy feeding. And the wild dogs came and started pestering that poor uh, hippo, the little hippo. And of course that hippo just tried to like, you know, like ran after one dog and the dog would run off and come back again and they would just pester this poor hippo. Eventually, not just one, but maybe three or four individuals, hippo individuals came out uh, and uh, they actually chased Try to chase the wild dogs off, you know, like leave this youngster alone, leave him alone, you know. And uh, the young one got an opportunity to go back uh, straight into the water again. So, yes, that uh, just shows you, not just the, the mom that's going to be protective, but a few of the individuals, or most of the individuals in that pod will try and chase the danger off. You know where the danger is. And that's exactly, they knew where the danger was. Catherine, thank you so much. It was a fantastic drive. So much happening and uh, yeah, it was uh, all the excitement for today. I'm definitely going to go, go and have a little bit of a 
a chow now, some uh, nice, uh, it's bright day, so I'm going to have a chow now and then go and head to the bed very early tonight. All the excitement, I think my, my, my eyes and uh, my mental and emotional side of things is drained out and uh, yeah, time for a good little nap tonight. So, but it was fantastic, what a beautiful drive. And as always, we just want to say thank you to everybody that joined us on our sunset safari this evening. Thank you so much for all the comments and all the amazing questions that everybody has sent through. Um, kept us, definitely kept us uh, entertained. Hoping that tomorrow morning produces uh, just as much excitement as, uh, as today. And I'm, you know, as I say, you never know what's around the next corner. So make sure that you do tune into our Sunrise Safari tomorrow morning, which will start at 6 a.m. Central African time. It's going to be a nice sunny day apparently. It's going to be sunny, sunny, sunny and nice and warm. So I can't wait for that. But uh, yes, uh, from uh, these hippos, from the Wild Earth crew, from Muscles and Paul and myself, have a wonderful evening or morning, wherever you're watching from. See you tomorrow. Good night.